comment your thoughts. Oi. Yep, I agree with you there, Campbell. That was one of the worst games I've seen under rats as well. Not, uh... Not the game I was expecting coming into this, to be honest. I think we all had such a build, big build-up during the week. You know, we focused on, on you know, Spud's game, Time to Talk, Danny Frawley tribute, the fact that it was our first home game at Marvel in probably, I think, over 600 days. Um, coming off a gallant win against GWS in, in trying conditions last week in Sydney... Max King and Zach Jones returned, so we were stronger than last week. We had players back. We didn't really have many excuses going into this. And, yeah, to be fair, the I think it was 18 points in the end. That flattered us. That The scoreboard should not have been that close, guys. That's the most disappointing thing for me. Is, and I was telling my girlfriend this in the last quarter when we were about 16, 17 points down with about 10 minutes to go, that... I wish we would, uh, you know, 10 goals more down like we deserved to be because then I would have just not cared and I could have just sat back and said, okay, well, we've lost this. But instead, Melbourne kept missing. We Gresham kicks one, McKernan kicks one, Higgin kicks one, and you're like, well, actually, there's probably five minutes to go. We're down by three goals. We could win this, but also we don't deserve to be this close and we definitely don't deserve uh, to win the game at all. So... That was one of the least, I don't know, in, um, enjoying, you know, sort of games that I've been to, and it's 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 funny, you know, you forget how it feels to lose at a game because last year we were all watching it from home with COVID and everything, but now to be back and to hear all the, uh, you know, the the annoying Melbourne fans chanting and and giving it to us and rightly so. I mean, we played terrible, but that feeling just sinks back in and it just feels terrible. And I don't, didn't really want to go through that until maybe round five when we played Richmond. Uh, but instead, we're going through it now in round two when we were favourites. And again, we failed the test to be favourites. You know, we went in last week underdogs, missing players, and we, we responded. We get players back, we're favourites. We're on our home deck where everyone thinks we're going to be a force to be reckoned with at Marvel and play fast football. And we played, we played every. It was into their hands. We knew that Lever was going to be a problem. We knew that May was going to be a problem. And the big one, we knew that Max Gorn was going to dominate in the ruck, and that he was going to go back and clog up the defence so that when we kicked it in there, it was going to be hard. But what do we do, guys? We bomb it. We give it to them every time. I mean, we got 16, 17 points up in no time in the second quarter, and from that point on. We got cocky, we, we handballed when we needed a kick, we played around, we, we got ahead of ourselves. Um, and that was the most disappointing thing, is that we drank our own bathwater. We, we got ahead of steam, thought the game was done when Battle snapped that goal, and went back into the rooms and, and pretty much didn't turn up after that. So that, to me, was the most disappointing thing. And just quickly, to flag, everyone in the comments giving absolute shit to Brad Hill. I know he played a bad game. Everyone knows he played a, ga a bad game. No one more so than Brad Hill himself. He knows that. You could tell. There was a moment or two where he missed a kick, and he missed a lot of kicks tonight, but he missed a kick, and he went straight up to, I think it was Jack Steele or Hunter Clark, and you could tell he was saying, ah, you know, I'm not, it's not working for me, and they were saying, it's all right, just keep going. And that's one thing that he did that you can you cannot say that a lot of other players did, which was take the game on. He missed his kicks, but he still tried to make something happen. He he still tried to do something for the team. And I know it didn't work out nine times out of ten, but even the best players have bad games. And where was Butler? Where was Jack Higgins until the last quarter? Where was Jack Loney until the last quarter? Um, you know, Seb Ross played a stellar game. Jack Steele kept us in it with three goals. Max King returned well. Even Zach Jones returned well. McKernan struggled. Paul Hunter was destroyed. Uh, Dougal Howard had a lot of the ball but made a lot of mistakes. Um, you know, you go through the whole team and you could name five or six players that 
you can't even really give them a, a, a judgment because they didn't do enough. Battle, apart from the goal. What the hell did he do? There were so many passengers today, and that's something that we haven't really come to, to see in the last year because everyone gives 110%. Everyone goes hard. Everyone plays their best. But today, it just the star power of Melbourne, and I hate to say it, but the Petrarchas, the Clayton Olivers, um, the Max Gorns, and the Mays, they made us worried, and we played as if we were too conscious of their strengths without realizing, well, we've got strengths too. We've got things that we've got weapons that can make Melbourne worry, but we didn't go for that. We were like, you could tell when we were trying to kick it inside 50 that we were too conscious of there's May, there's Lever, and Gorn's there. So kick it somewhere else. And where was that? That was to, you know, the pocket where it rolled out of bounds, or it was to a position where it favored them anyway. And when we kicked goals, we actually kicked it to those players, but in a congested setting where they all clashed and it came to ground. And that's how Jack Steele snapped his goal um, in the third quarter. But apart from that, there were little positives. It felt like a 10-goal loss. I don't know if you guys agree with me, if I'm exaggerating, if I'm going a bit overboard. But to me, they kicked... How many goals? They, uh, points did they kick? Seven. Oh, 17. Eight, they kicked 17 or 18 points. Like, for fuck's sake. The game, it could have been ugly. The fact that we keep, they, they kicked less than 100 points in, in a domination like that is astounding. They should have buried us in the third, and they didn't. We kicked a few goals late. It gave us some hope, but, but not enough. So, yeah, I just wanted to flag that, yes, Brad Hill had a poor game, but to say we should, trans, we should trade him or get rid of him... This and that, that's a bit of an overreaction. And I know you guys are commenting saying, Brad Hill's hopeless, Brad Hill doesn't deserve the pay packet that he's on. He, di- he, he couldn't have done much more tonight. I know that he missed his kicks, but so did a lot of players. Maybe our forwards didn't present. Look at the forward structure. No one was moving. If you're at the ground tonight, I feel sorry for Brad Hill because he's trying to kick it to players into space. He's trying to kick it to players that can play on and they're not moving. So... It's, it's just a bad loss. I'm happy to lose when we play to our strengths and it's just like, yeah, they played better. Kudos to them, whatever. But the fact that we didn't give ourselves a chance until three minutes to go when we actually realized, well, we're going to lose this um, is really, uh, really, really disappointing, really shitty. So um, that's my little rant. I hate that I had to do one this early in the year and I hope I don't have to do one for a few more weeks, but got that out of my chest hopefully you guys can can vent away in the comments let me know how you're feeling um and yeah i mean let's go through some of the comments um i'll scroll all the way to the top there's been a lot so thanks guys for commenting um let's see where was the heart that's from ryan very good call all week it was about Spud. It was about Danny Frawl and the fact that he wears his heart on his sleeve and he gives it. He gave it his all for the club that he loved. And you couldn't really say that, you know, maybe three or four players out there tonight. Apart from that, they gave up. There were times when Melbourne were dancing around in the, in the middle of the ground. There was one instance, I think, where Josh Battle was literally flat-footed and only sprinted when the player was... You know, got a full head of steam as if, you know, the camera's on me, I need to move. But prior to that, he was just standing still. And that told me, well, yeah, we're not on. Saints footy is pressure footy. It is running, it is chasing, it is tackling. I'd be very curious to see what the tackling numbers are, but um, I'm sure they're low. This one's from Farron. Absolute shocker. Our ball use was appalling. Couldn't agree more. Our ball use was the worst that I've seen it under Brett Ratton. Um, even in our, you know, smashing when we played Geelong last year and got um, embarrassed, I feel like even our ball use in that game was better. Um, tonight, under the roof, perfect conditions. And Melbourne gave us the ball too. They made some silly mistakes too. So that adds to the level of frustration is that they didn't play a perfect game. They missed like 19 shots. 15 of them were probably gettable. They turned the ball over in the middle as much as we did. We just turned it over more. It was literally, they were okay and we were just shit. You know, they were shit, but we were shitter. That's kind of how I see it. They deserved the win, but both teams, if they had to play to Port Adelaide or a Richmond tonight, both would have been embarrassed with the way they were playing. We just played that much worse. Um, 
And we're lucky that they missed, essentially. Uh, Jason says, we were really um, flat last week, must have taken its toll. I was worried about this going into the game, but I didn't really want to use it as an excuse. I know that a lot of um, Saners online were commenting saying, well, it was a tough slog, we had to travel, we had a day less... Um, uh, you know, a day less to recover, um, and Melbourne played Fremantle at the G on the Saturday. So I don't know how the fixturing works there. Well, we're the we had to travel interstate, and we're the one that gets less um, recovery. How the hell does that work? You know, the AFL's fucked up there, um, honestly. But it could it could take its toll. I mean, we did look. You know, you're not used to seeing Dan Butler stand still and not put pressure on, but that's how it was tonight. And Jack Loney was. You know, it was anonymous. He kicked that goal last week, but apart from that, I haven't seen him since. Uh, Marx is just awful. Seb Ross was good, though. Agreed there. Seb Ross was probably my saner of the day. Um, Diana says, once again, big stage. Disappointment, no heart. Um, played like shit. Hill is a spud. That's from Matt. Each to their own, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to... Fo- I'm not going to use... This- yeah, a scapegoat. That's what Brad Hill is to everyone right now. He's a scapegoat. Well, we lost because Brad Hill had a bad kick. No, we lost because 22 blokes didn't commit for four quarters. That's why. Even Dustin Martin makes mistakes in Richmond games because he takes the kick. He goes for stuff that other players don't. But because they're winning, it's okay. If we had have won the game by 10 goals and Brad Hill had the exact same game and missed his kicks, no one would be commenting. It's because we lost and he's the easy out and everyone else is saying, well, Brad Hill's this, Brad Hill's that. Everyone jumps on the bandwagon and goes for Hill. But I'm, I'm having none of that. Uh, played like spuds, that's Lisa. Exactly. We all They all played like spuds, spuds tonight. Um, you know, there was a f- only two or three players, like I said, that really could hold their heads high at the end. And Bytel should have started this game. We played too many small forwards. We didn't need Loney, Butler, Higgins, and Gresham. Really, Loney, it would have been harsh, but we needed Bytel in the middle. We needed more grunt. We needed another big body uh, because they bullied us in the middle. And the fact that we didn't pick up on roving uh, Gorn's taps for pretty much the entire game is the worst part of this. We knew Gorn going into this that he was going to dominate hitouts and and put it down the throat of the midfield of Melbourne. But we still tried to play as if we were backing Hunter to win the taps and that that seems, you know, just unrealistic in my eyes. Um Stevens says need to make a statement and drop Brad Hill. Mate, he's not going to he's not getting dropped. The one I can see Brad Crouch coming out and maybe a Jack Loney being dropped. We played too many smalls. We need more inside grunt. Crouch gives us that. And I feel like Loney, although he kicked that amazing goal last week, that's all he's done, you know? And he bobs up once every couple of games for that sort of thing. But it's not consistent enough. Uh, Rusty says, just a big disappointment. Ha- um, have to and will bounce next week. Um, Spud would be livid. Agreed. Agreed. Nathan says, we have Marshall and Ryder in that game and we win that game. Don't think it was as bad as it seemed. Gorn had free reign. I mean, there were you know plenty of instances where we kicked the ball long and you, I, just had, I just had this vision of you know either Marshall or Ryder going for that mark and they take it. But it was McKernan and Paul Hunter and it's no disrespect to them. They've been thrown in straight away. They probably didn't expect to be um, with the injuries that we had. Um, but they have, and we're going to get players back. We're going to get Brad Crouch next week, potentially Rowan Marshall. They've got Sam Draper, Essendon, so they you know, a good young Ruckman, so it might force uh, Rowan Marshall to really come in a bit early, but hopefully he's, he's fit. He's been training, so is Paddy Ryder, so fingers crossed that they can come back soon. Uh, Emily says, Steele and Membry played while everyone else can rethink their night. Agreed. Uh, Mitch has a lot of those Saints players struggled. Um... Hussam says, don't blame Ratten, blame the players. I agree. No doubt, Ratten. We know what Ratten wants us to do. He wants us to run, play exciting football, play expansive football, use our strengths, which is leg speed and pressure, um, and get it long into the forward line and hold it in. Didn't do any of that tonight. So I 100% want the players to to look at the review and say, yep, put our hands up and say, yep, we, we stuffed that and we'll make it good next week. Butler was terrible. That's from Susie. Um... If Hill can't hit a target, we're fucked. That's from Adam. Uh, A few Hill comments here, but I'll just skip them. Uh, John says, Steele, the only one that played with heart. 
yeah, it's disappointing. Him and Seb Ross. Marcus Hope Rats gives us a massive kick in the ass for that and fires us up to belt Essendon. I know, it's a big game next week. We uh, This is, you know, tonight was pressure. We were expected to win. Uh, but Melbourne can play good on their day and they seem to be a bogey team of us now. Last year and now this year. Uh, but Essendon, who I think got belted by Port today, expected to be bottom four. No excuses. So that adds to the pressure of us having to rebound off the back of this. Um, Oliver Sestil was all class tonight. Uh, where was Max King in the second half? That's from Bitter. I um, mean, he kicked two goals. He He actually set up um, or ha- he kicked or had a hand in our first four goals of the game. Kicked two, set up Membry and set up Steele on the lead, I'm pretty sure. So um, if he does that every week, even though he went missing for a bit, that's fine by me. Um, Jason says, standing around watching instead of having a go. Yeah, we were spectating. There was so many times where we all went in for the, and this is something that I'm used to Melbourne doing, but we, all our players went in for the ball. The ball comes out. Everyone's already in the contest. No one's on the outside ready to pick up the crumbs and run with it like we're used to. And Melbourne had first use every time. The amount of centre clearances that they got, you know, just free reigns out from Max Gorn and our, and our players playing a bit too, I don't know, um, we're a bit too ball focused as opposed to man focus, I thought. Uh, Dean says, I can handle the turnovers from Hill, but can't handle the lack of effort to tackle. It wasn't just him tonight, mate. It was a lot of players that didn't tackle. Um, need to make some changes next week. Oh, well, there's a force change in... <clears throat> voice breaking now. Uh, voice change in Brad Brad Crouch um, coming in and, and Rowan Marshall, hopefully. Um, Elaine says not to, to take anything away from Melbourne. They won last week and look a good team. I agree. They played well. They played to their strengths. And that's something that we didn't do. And that's the most disappointing thing for me is that, like I said, I'm happy to lose. Um, but I'm not happy to lose when we don't give ourselves a chance. Um, when did Max Gorn and Petrarca join St Kilda? We seem to kick it to them at every opportunity. Yeah. The... the Inside 50 delivery reminded me of Alan Richardson days. That's kind of where, that's how bad it was. The bomb. And we don't like the bomb. And funnily enough, we, we're so used to blaming Seb Ross for the bomb. But tonight, he, was, he, he wasn't the problem. It was some of our better ball users that were the problem. Ah, oh, bloody hell, guys. There's so many comments. I, I honestly, if I go through them, it's going to be the same story. We bombed Brad Hill's shit. We should trade him back to Fremantle. And we need to bounce back next week. You know, that's there's not much I can say un, until next week, really. We need to bounce back. There's no excuse. Um, Isaac says, Steele and Ross were both elite tonight. Dougal, best on ground for sure, was a rock down there. I don't know about best on ground. He tried his best, but he also did some... I've never seen him try to take the man on the mark on more than tonight. And there were a few times it worked. A few times he turned the ball over and it went straight over the, his head for a goal. So... Um, It deserved to be a 10-goal loss. That's from Sammy. Uh, Austin says, spot on. Tried to play cautiously because we were worried about their strengths and didn't use ours. Yep. Non-existent small forwards today. Exactly right. Farron says, Melbourne deserved to win at the end of the day. Should have been a 50-point loss. Oh, God. I hate reading ne- negative comments, guys. It's uh, Why can't we just win every week? You know, Why can't it be that unrealistic? Next week, Don's. It's from Anthony. Yep, Essendon next week, Saturday, 4.35. We'll be back. Hopefully, the crowd's not deterred and we rock up in numbers and support the boys because then we go 2-1 and one, and then we've got West Coast again. So, big game there. And then we've got a tough run after that. So, we need some percentage and we need the win, nonetheless, next week. Team discipline was shocking. Giving away too many free kicks. Uh, Dean says, we played dumb, pure and simple. We need another forward, too. Um... I trade Loney for a packet of chips. Soft, that's from Liv. Yeah, look, he didn't have a great game tonight, did he? Um, and he'd be he'd be nervous about his position next week. I was going. This is from Cam. I was going to go to Platform Twenty Eight for beers if we won, but no, nah, I think it's home time. I, I, I'm curious to see if Marshy rocks up. I don't know if Marshy's gonna gonna turn up, but if anyone's there, um, 
have a have a couple of beers just to forget the game, and then uh, wake up tomorrow with a sore 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 head. Um. Yeah, I think I'm gonna cut it there, guys. I got to drive home, and ah, oh, yeah, I'm upset. I'm upset. I'm smiling right now, but come tomorrow morning, it's gonna hit me pretty hard, and um, yeah. Not a fun night at Marvel Stadium. I wish, I wish we were talking about a win. I wish we could just say how proud we were about the boys and how they stood up for, for Danny Frawley and the emotion didn't get to them. And we could sit here being 2-0 and for the first, for the, only the fourth time, I think, in 10 years. Um, but yeah, even Richmond lose games. I'm just trying to tell myself that. I'm trying to be level-headed. Even Richmond lose games. Uh, the best teams, you don't go undefeated in a season. It just never happens. Um... And yeah, Melbourne can enjoy this win. This was their grand final. Beating St Kilda is always Melbourne's grand final. They got nothing else, so let them enjoy it. Um, and we'll be back next week to take on Essen. But until then, guys, I'm going to leave it. Myself, Marsh, and Joycey will be back in the studio on Tuesday night, and no doubt that's going to be a bit of a sad reflection on the game, and then we'll focus on the Essendon game. Um, but yeah. It's, it's going to be a quiet drive home, that's for sure. Uh, what is that? What is that comment? Hey, Jakey, are those uh, leather seats? Oh, you know, budget of Saints TV, it's just the perks, mate. You know, you as the godfather, you, you get the perks and you get the leather seats in the car. So my girlfriend's cringing over here. But, um, yeah, on, an, on a lighter note, I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks so much for watching, venting, commenting, and hopefully you guys will have a good weekend and try and forget this game as quickly as possible because I'm going to try and do the same. It's only round two, so it's a long season. It's, um, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Throw that cliche out there. Um, but, yeah, until then, guys, have a great rest of your weekend. Disappointing tonight, really disappointing tonight. Um, but yeah, we'll be back next week to take on Essendon and hopefully get the job done and go two and one and hopefully get back into the eight because we desperately need to, to get back on the winner's list. So have a great weekend, guys. I'll see you soon. Um, go Saints.